I want to show you this new tool I heard about called Julius AI. What we're going to do here, going to upload a couple files, and I'll explain a little bit more about how I learned about Julius AI in a second as we go through this process. Uploading two general fund revenue summaries from Dunwoody, Georgia. And I want to ask it to give some insights onto this budget here. Please give me insights into the revenues for Dunwoody, Georgia. So I first heard about this from a, an individual at our work in where I get to work at the city I get to work at. And it, it reminds me a lot of chat GPT four, very, uh, very, very similar to the code interpreter, or now it's called advanced data analytics, very similar to that kind of feel to it. It goes a little bit beyond it though, I think in that it has the ability to quickly build visualizations and it even offers the, the option to have additional prompts and to continue the conversation and it allows it to kind of go deeper. The other thing I like about it too, as you can see, you can highlight over these tables here, kind of gives it kind of very much of an Excel type of feeling to it, or a, maybe even a Google Sheets feel to the, the the tables here that it's giving me. Obviously, you can copy this, you can right-click copy or things like that there. You can right-click right here, save the table or something like that if you wanted to. So it's going to go through and look at all the, the headers and the information, these two budgets. I just grabbed the general fund summaries for revenue summaries, general fund revenue summaries rather, for 21 and 2022 budgets for the city of Dunwoody. So it's going through here. It's going to calculate the percentage change for each type of revenue to provide a more detailed comparison. So it's going through and kind of give me some insights here. It talks about how business and occupational taxes have decreased from 21 to 22 kind of go through here line by line, look at these different things, even rename the columns to a more descriptive names. And the first row, which a duplicate of the header has been removed. That's kind of nice that it kind of went through and cleaned the data up for us automatically. Obviously, if we needed a specific revenue fund name, we'd want to go back and, and alter that and change that. Here it's done. From this table, we can see the percentage change in each type of revenue from 21 to 22. So let's go ahead and visualize this. And this is really cool how quickly we can build these different visualizations here. Again, reminds me a lot of Code Interpreter or Advanced Data Analytics as it's now referred to. The I think one of the distinguishing differences though is pricing. And here we can see, here's a quick bar chart that it showed me here. So some of them are decreasing. I'll, I'll highlight this a little bit more. Some of them are decreasing. Some of them are increasing. So interesting. Let's do another visualization and see what else we can build here. So as it's doing the visualization, again, back to the pricing, the, the model allows you a couple of free prompts each month. And honestly, it's not it's not a lot compared to what other free models have, have given in terms of kind of the basic plans. I think of like Claude or Perplexity or things like that. But then it has a, a yearly basic subscription starting at about $150 per month, which seems steep. But if you think about it, I'll explain in a second why I don't think that's quite as steep as, as it may seem right on paper. So here's another, uh, here's a bar plot comparing revenues. We can even do this. We can, so these, these different prompts down here are really, really cool. So we can say, let's keep going. So it says, keep going, use your best judgment on what to do next. Feel free to use more advanced tools. So the $150 per month seems steep, right? So, you know, that equates to what, 12, 13 bucks a month, about the price of a, of a Netflix subscription. If you compare it to ChatGPT Plus, that model is around $20 per month is what I normally pay for. And obviously that brings in a whole bunch of other features with it too, like Dolly or the ability to upload images, uh, the different plugins that it has access to, you know, about 900 plus plugins that's currently in the, in the plugin library last I checked and probably even more now since it was last week that I checked that. So interesting price comparison, the, the $150 per month per year versus the $20 per month within ChatGPT Plus. Again, here's another quick visualization it did here. Really, really cool. We can even go down here. So that was keep going. We can even go down and say, suggest prompts. So suggest some other prompts to try. 
I really, really like this feature of being able to suggest prompts because sometimes I don't always know what should I ask next? What am I missing? Am I, am, is there another, is there a analysis or something I should do with this data that I'm just not thinking of, which is really cool. So here's some other prompts you might try. Average percentage change, type of revenue, have the largest increase, median percentage change, show me a box plot, of the percentage change in revenues, the standard deviation, the percentage change in revenues correlation between the revenues in 21 and the revenues in 22. So let's just do a pie chart here and we'll kind of wrap up with this here. So let's copy this in here and paste this here. Again, I really, really like how quickly it can kind of go through this data set, offer interesting prompts, really cool and, and unique new tool. I would recommend exploring it if I were you. Use the free version for a couple, you know, give it a spin or something like that and see what you can do and kind of see what, what it looks like. So it says there's an error because the data set contains values. Pie charts can be created with values. So it's going to remove the values and, and add that to a percentage change instead of looks like. So it says, given the number of values is relatively small, we can choose to remove these rules from the data set, allowing us to create pie charts without significantly impacting analysis. Let's proceed with this approach. After removing the rows with values, the data set now has 14 rows and 14 columns. So here is the pie chart. Again, kind of messy because of the number of revenue fund types or revenue funds that are in this budget. So it kind of creates a messy pie chart. But for the sake of this demonstration, it's kind of showing you how quickly we can create this data and this visualization is really, really interesting. There's one other feature I want to show too. So if you go back to new chat, there's this thing right here called customize AI. And, and this is really where I, I don't know, the, the pricing is it's interesting, is you have select option between OpenAI's ChatGPT4 and Anthropic Claude. And I've already talked about how much I really enjoy Anthropic Claude, especially for document generation or writing memos or things like that. I'll post a link to the video on that Anthropic Claude review. If you haven't seen that yet, post right up above here. The other interesting thing here, so Anthropic Claude is capable of simple analysis. Strengths are document summarization, text parsing, and contextual searching, where within GPT-4, it's more about the data slicing and filtering, visualizations and animation, forecasting and classification. So you have both of these really, really powerful tools all tied into one platform called Julius AI. Really interesting. Go ahead and explore it. Let me know what you think. I'm going to start using this at work myself to kind of see what I can do with it, learn new tools with it, and kind of see what, yeah, let's explore this together and see what happens.